there's some major, major concerns about your mental health, that you may be a danger to yourself and also to others. Okay. Can we not pick up the phone and call them now and find out? Well, I mean, I'll give you all the numbers. I just Googled. Do y'all want to call and find out? It appears that things are not going well for him at the jail. All right. What happened to you? Hey, I hit myself. <laughs> okay. All right. What's going on? Judge, uh, there seems to be a question whether Mr. N uh, Courtney has any pending cases out of Caldwell County. And I'd like to ask uh, the court for a couple of more weeks, maybe, to find out whether there are anything cases pending or uh, probation or anything out of Caldwell. Yes, ma'am. So we, we got a TCIC and TIC criminal history, and I can see that uh, so the new number ones alleged in the MCR are uh, cases out of Kerr County and Caldwell County. And it looks like from the criminal history that the Kerr County case has been uh, disposed of, but the Caldwell County case looks from the TCIC, it's from the criminal history, it looks like it's still pending. So uh, we'd like to ask for some more time because that will affect uh, the recommendation. Route. All right. So can't you all just call the uh, the public defender's office? That's what I plan on doing, either sheriff's office, public I mean, defender. I mean, can yeah. we not pick up the phone and call them now and find out? Well, I mean, I'll give you all the numbers. I just Googled. Do you all want to call and find out? It appears that things are not going well for him at the jail. I can attempt to call him, Judge. Okay. If you have an emergency, that'd be great. Okay, sure. All right. All right, court is calling 2022 CR1615, State of Texas versus Nicholas. Dean Courtney, I have parties announced for the record for the state. Thank you. We'll get to the state, Ron. Defense. Both analysis for defense. Are you Mr. Courtney? Uh, yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision and first amended motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Are you the same Nicholas Dean Courtney who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2022? CR 1615 for the offense of assault bodily injury security officer on April 20, 2022 for a term of three years. Is that you? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right, state. But this is on the first amended motion bill. Uh, violated condition number five in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Nicholas D. Courtney did then and there fail, down, please. fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of July and August 2023 in violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that? True or not true? Not true. And Your Honor, we waive the other violations alleged in the motion. Any objections to the waivers? No objections, Your Honor. And Your Honor, the, uh, the proposed- Just one second. Yes, All right, Mr. Uh, Courtney, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, Sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation of condition number five true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Your Honor. We're asking that you deny the motion, continue uh, the defendant on deferred adjudication. Uh, we're asking that you follow uh, probation's recommendation, which is state ISF uh, cognitive treatment, uh, followed by ISP supervision. Uh, and we're asking that he, he remain in uh, in the Bear County Jail until his treatment the treatment bed becomes available uh, at ISAC. All right. Are you asking the court to follow this agreement? I am, Your Honor. All right. Uh, probation. Is this what is being recommended? All right, uh, Mr. Courtney, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Uh, Nicholas Courtney. All right, Mr. Courtney, where have you been? Uh, I've been, uh, I guess, uh, July, August, uh, when I missed my probation. Uh, I went to uh, Hayes County uh, where I was going, I was attempting to visit my grandmother. Uh, he was uh, ailing 
and she was on hospice. I got picked up there in Hayes County and went to Caldwell. And from uh, I have a charge from back prior to the COVID episode. And then I uh, finished that one up and uh, came up here to Kirby where I had a couple of tickets. And now I'm here. All right. So if you had to go see your relative, why didn't you just call probation and ask? I had no way of making communication with anybody. Well, here's the thing. You left Bear County to go somewhere else, didn't you? Yes, so why you could not have left wherever you were to take a bus ride to probation? Probation does actually have a physical office. Yes, ma'am. I had been there. Uh, I had lost my bus pass. I had lost all my property. So again, the here's the thing. You know where probation office is. Are you telling the court you didn't know where probation's office yes. was? I know that I know the street, but I, without a way to communicate or use the internet to find the bus path or any of that stuff out there on Palo Alto, I had a lot of trouble finding it. Yesterday. Oh, do you know where a library is? I know where the library. Is. I found it. I found yep, it right you could have went to the library. The library has computers there that you allowed to use for free. Yeah, man. So why didn't you do that? I did. I was not considering the library as a, an option. Not think about the other library. My mother being sick, I just went sort of crazy and I lost all my property and I freaked out. So he hasn't been seen since August of 2023. So we've almost not seen him for an entire year. And they said that he's already completed the DDRF program. So is there mental health issues here? Uh, probation? Because it says on the court summary that he's the mentally impaired caseload. Uh, he is on uh, they All right. And then, so what I see in this from the stipulated evidence was that this entire incident occurred at a state hospital sort of facility. That's the London. Yes. All right. So, Mr. Courtney, here are your choices. And sometimes I can give people choices. Sometimes I cannot give them choices. I can continue you. If I continue you, I don't know if ISF is appropriate, but it's what probation is asking for. Or either I can revoke you and I'll sentence you to two years. Which do you prefer? Uh, um, the, and revoke, no. hmm? the revoke. Okay. Do you need to discuss that with your attorney or no? Uh, just uh, maybe just with y'all, uh, if I'm like considered for back time and stuff like that. Oh, you get credit for the time that you've been in custody. Yes. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to talk with him for a little bit? Yes. Just briefly. Yeah. And more information that I didn't have before. So I don't think it would be appropriate for me to sentence you um, to two years based upon how you classified at the jail. Mm -hmm. I think, and I could be wrong. You know, I don't have a crystal ball, but there is some major, major concerns about your mental health. And what I've, I've just been given more information that I didn't have before about your mental health and how you're classified at the Bear County Jail. So I think it's probably best that I not revoke you and sentence you to two years because I think you would be, based upon what I'm being told by all parties involved, that you may be a danger to yourself and also to others, okay? I, ever since my mother's passed, honestly, I've been going through a lot. Okay. And these are self-inflicted. I don't know how to, you know, explain. it's weird that somebody would just actually beat themselves and mm -hmm. something. And it's like buried inside of me and I can't seem to figure out quite what it is. I think, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like something I can't see or figure and once she left, that's just been like, talking and voices, screaming and scratching at myself. And All right. So here's the thing. Does he need uh, an evaluation? 
Sounds, sounds like that wouldn't be a bad idea. I believe we can do that, Judge. I think we should do that. All right. So if there's no objection, I'm going to allow the withdrawal of the defendant's plea of true to violation of condition number five. Uh, Norma, on this case, there needs to be um, a competency evaluation order. So a competency evaluation will be ordered. He's to remain in custody uh, until the completion of the competency evaluation. And Norma, once that's completed, uh, Mr. Courtney, we'll have you brought back. Any objections to the court proceeding this way, defense? No objections from defense, Judge. Defense? I'm sorry, state. No objection, Your Honor. All right, so the plea of true to uh, number five is withdrawn. And we'll do a uh, competency evaluation. And Norma, let's reset this. Reset it for May 20th, maybe just to see where we are. So Mr. Courtney, we're going to bring you back on May 20th. Uh, it may be sooner than that. Uh, let Judge Carruthers Court know that there doesn't need to be an informer inquiry that we're requesting. I'm requesting a competency evaluation be done. All right. So that's the way we will proceed. And uh, Deputy, thank you for letting me know that. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else? All right. Pardon thank me. you. Maybe excuse. Yes. Two thousand twenty-four CR four zero six one, State of Texas versus David Ingram. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. I'm out of the website. And are you David Ingram? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Did you review it uh, with your client? Yes, sir. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Ingram, did you review the true bill of indictment with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Ingram, did you review what's entitled court admonishments and defendants' waivers and affidavit of admonitions with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you're charged with kidnapping? That's a third-degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, court does not have to follow your plea bargain agreement. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea bargain agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used with, against you, and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I believe so. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Ingram, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, Your Honor. Anyone promise you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Did you review the plea bargain page with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at three years in the prison and there are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense, is that the plea? That is, Your Honor. State, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Did you review the waiver of appeal paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Yes, Your Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. And outside the agreement, the state is requesting there be no contact with Robert Betts, B-E-T-T-S. Did you understand that was a recommendation from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, Your Honor. Then to the offenses charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. State, any evidence? Your Honor, I offer state's exhibit one in the attachments. Any objection? No objections, Your Honor. And state, have you spoken with the complainant? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We uh, arrived on Biggs Advocate, as Your Honor. All right. Judge, we have talked with the complainant previously. All right, thank you. 
Uh, Mr. Ingram, did you review the document entitled Waiver and Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be uh, presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there'll be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has been knowing, has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and the court will review the same. All right, after reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, sir. All right, what's your issue? Why are you doing this? I mean, it says you were in scrubs. Where are you coming from? Hospital. For what? Meth induced psychosis. Oh, okay. All right. Court will find you guilty, sentence you to three years in the prison. Do you have any children? No, ma'am. You credit for any time served. There's to be no contact with Robert Betts. And is there any restitution to Mr. Betts? No, Your Honor. All right. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? No, Your Honor. All right, did you re uh, review the document and sign it called Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with Your Attorney? And did you understand it? Yes, sir. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to the attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing. There are so many things that could have been, gone wrong with that scenario. Like that person could have been driving the Amazon van and just scraped you off of a side of a wall and gone about his business. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And I understand sometimes the tattoo thing that's happening, that's prison stuff. But if you plan on doing anything with your life of value where people don't judge you by your tattoos, you have better change those tattoos and change yourself internally. You understand? Yes, yes ma'am. I've given my life to God. I've changed my life. I have a testimony that I've, I've given to people in prison. I went from Marine, firefighter, paramedic to prison for 12 years. I mean, I know my life has went the wrong way and it's all buying drugs. All right. And what's on the side of your cheek there? It's, it's getting removed. See? I mean, I'm, I'm judged. I know. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck to you, okay? Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a big excuse. Yes. Good luck.